One way to get audio into Audition is to extract audio tracks from a CD. So we're going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. Typically when you put a CD into your CD player or your DVD drive, you get a message something like this, saying, what do you want to do now that you've put the CD in? Do you want to play it? Do you want to rip it? And this will be different depending on the software installed on your system and whether you're running Windows or Mac. Since we want to use Audition for this purpose, we just click the X here or cancel out or however you can get out of that particular process and go over to Audition. Now here's how you extract audio from CD. You go to File, Extract Audio from CD, and there are those three dots, again, meaning we're going to open up another menu now. There's the menu. And it looks at the CD, and if it determines that it's a commercial CD, a one that you can purchase, it goes to a database and loads up the name of the tracks. Let me show you how that works. If you go to this little Settings button here and click that, then it shows you what CDDB server it's looking at to find that information. This is the default one that the folks at Adobe put in here, but if you subscribe to a different service, you can put that one in. And if you do subscribe to a service, then you want to put in a real email address here rather than just use the one that they do generically. But most folks won't change this. The one thing that's kind of interesting down here is the file name template. When you open up a CD, you see the names down below here. And then if you select one of them and then extract it, that name will appear over here in the files panel, which is a good thing. The reason it appears there is because of this little percentage S. Notice when I hover the cursor there, I get this tooltip that says enter the template to be used when creating the file name for an extracted audio track. And percentage S is the song title. If you want to, let's say, include the album title in this process, you can put percentage D, for example. So I'll type in percentage D here, percentage D, and I want to have the album title separated from the song title by a hyphen, so I'll add the hyphen. So now when I add a file from this list, I extract one and it shows up here in the files panel, the album title will be included in the name of the song track. So let me just click OK. It won't show up here yet, but it will show up when we do extract one. Now to extract files, I could just say, go, OK, run it but it'll extract 11 different files, and that'll take a little time, and I don't really want to extract 11. I'll just do a short one here, letter from home. So to do that one, I need to toggle them all off, and then select this one. Now when I click OK, it'll extract it, and I'll just pause the recording here so we can jump ahead quickly. Here we go. All right, we've done that extracting. It just took a few seconds, but I wanted to save you some time here. Notice the name. It says, the road to you hyphen letter from home. That's because the road to you is the CD name and the letter from home is the name of the track. And notice also that it has an asterisk after the name. What's going on here is that that file was extracted and put into a temporary folder as a temporary file. And there it will sit. If you don't save it, then when you close Audition, it will go away. So it's just sitting there waiting for you to do something with it. Now, if you want to do something with it just by saving it or if you want to edit it in some way, and then save it, then that will then put it wherever you tell it to be stored. But right now it's in this temporary location. It's all highlighted here, ready for you to do some work on it. So let's just say now I want to save this. So I click on this and I go File, Save As, or Save. If I click Save, it's going to still say, where do you want me to save it? Because you don't want to save it in the temporary place. But anyway, if you click File, Save, or Save As, then you can determine where it's going to be saved now. It won't be saved in that temporary folder. It'll be saved in some folder where you tell it to be stored. So I just want to show you how that process works. I'm going to cancel out of this. Now I want to show you what happens if you open up a CD that's not commercially available. So I'm going to pause the recording once again and we'll jump ahead to that. All right, now I've loaded up a CD that's not commercially available. Let's take a look at that. Go File, Extract Audio from CD. You'll notice that none of the tracks have a title because this is not stored on any database. This is just made by my choir for our internal use as kind of a souvenir of a concert. So now if I want to just extract, let's say, one track from here, it's just going to say CD track one, kind of generically. But you can fix that. So just toggle these guys off, and we'll select that one. That's the one we want to extract. I click on the title now to highlight it, and I click it again to turn it blue. And when it's blue, that means you can type in a new name. So I'm going to go opening song, just as a generic title for it. And now I want to also change the settings in the back here. So I'll click on this guy. Because I had this other setting on before, which said percentage D that put the album title, I want to get rid of that. But in fact, rather than get rid of it completely, I want to put in an album name. So I'm going to go Winter Concert 2011. And that will then be ahead of the title when it comes into the Files panel. So I click OK for that. And now it doesn't say it here, of course, but it will later. So I'm going to extract this audio clip. 
And I'll pause the recording for a moment while we do that. All right, now we're back, and there you can see the song showing up in the Files panel with the name of the CD in front of it and the title of the song after it. And I'll notice again it has an asterisk after it, meaning that, hey, this is in a temporary folder. It's a temporary file. You need to save it someplace if you want to hang on to it. Otherwise, you're going to lose it when you close Audition. So let me show you actually what happens when you close Audition if you haven't saved something. And in this particular case, it's just for demo purposes. I'm not worried about losing these guys. So I'm going to go Close Audition, click that. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to save the changes to that first one? I'll say no. How about that second one? Nope. And then it just shuts down. So that, folks, is how you use Audition to extract audio from a CD.